Hey there folks, this is GreenyXI, welcoming you right back to Let's Play Higurashi. This is episode 156. In the last episode, we finished off chapter 9, and we got the hag on our side. But it seems like the Child Consultation Centre still won't listen to a word we're saying, even when being begged by, uh, by the government and all that shit. So, let's see how that turns out in chapter 10. If it's anything like the anime, it's going to be pretty special. <laughs> And this is coming from someone who thinks the Sadko stuff is dragged out a bit. So they refused? Yes. I got a call from the local government section. The Child Consultation Centre has no intention of listening to us. They're still trying to do what they can, but we don't have much time. I even told them that we have no time to spare. The mayor came to the school before noon to explain to us what went down with the officials. They'd all gathered in the teacher's office to meet with him. Wow! I don't know the head of the centre personally, but he's a pretty tough guy to go against the will of Hinamazawa. He used to work for the prefecture, so he's not familiar with the town council here. He's not treating this like it's a big deal. He's kind of stupid. This isn't any ordinary village he's up against. This is Hinamazawa. What a sad guy. <laughs> we'll just have to fight them. I spoke with the other council members, and we all agreed that we can't stay quiet anymore. After all, we can't just nod our heads in defeat and back down after I put our name out there. True. We'll be heading to the consultation centre after this ourselves. Okay. I'll get right on arranging for the town council to send some people too. I'm about to go consult Oyu-san on how to handle this. This isn't like with a damn conflict though. It's an ordinary Saturday. Isn't it going to be difficult to get people to go? Don't worry, Kai-chan. This isn't a city. People are out there farming every day of the week. Whether it's a Saturday or a Tuesday, it doesn't really matter to them. It won't be that difficult to find people who are willing to help out. I see. I tend to think of adults as people who work at big companies, but this is Hinamazawa. Mazawa. I almost forgot about that. The regular government offices usually close at noon on Saturdays, but the Child Consultation Centre is open until 3pm. Can we all be there at 1? I can't promise you how many people I'll be able to bring along though. It doesn't matter how many people we get, as long as we get people. Thank you for your help. I'm so glad that more adults are involved now. Yeah, this is going to make a huge difference. The number of people we get will depend on what Oyu says. That's true. We'll see how serious she is about helping us based on how many people show up. If the hag's in as good as... Hmm? <clears throat> if the hag's in as good a mood as my mother says, then we might get about 30 people, from both the staff and the youth group. I think that's a fair guess. 30 adults plus 10 children? It sounds better than yesterday. I'm coming too. I'll bring my megaphone. <laughs> yes. Your legendary megaphone. I thought it was broken. That's the one I used to have. The Riot Squad broke it. Ah, the memories. I can feel the spirit of Onkafuchi making my blood boil. <laughs> Seems like we're going to be holding a festival on the day before Watanagashi to it, too. To the consultation centre. I wonder if they're still going to tell us that there's no evidence of abuse just because she hasn't admitted to it yet. That's pretty likely. How are things on your end, Rika-chan? Were you able to persuade Satko to seek help? Mm, I did my best. It's all up to her now. I wish Satko would stop being so stubborn. Sis, there are both times one should and shouldn't be stubborn. I can understand how Satko must feel. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean it that way. She might not want any help from us, but we wouldn't be her real friends if we couldn't see how scared she is. I agree. It'll be easy if Satko asked us for help. But it'll be too late if we wait for that to happen. If it's a child in the middle of a busy street, you pull her to the sidewalk before talking to her. Sometimes, actions have to come before words. That's a good analogy. Right. That's a good example. Yeah. I <laughs> have to pull her back to the sidewalk first. I've heard what's going on. Now let's all go back to the classroom and start homeroom. Go home, eat your lunches before you go to the child consultation centre, okay? It's not good to skip meals. At that point, everyone was thinking there wouldn't really be 30 adults there to support us. However, we were wrong. I had no idea how serious Hinamazawa can get. By the time I get there, with my 10 classmates, the quiet atmosphere around the library had completely disappeared. Oh my goodness! Are all these people from Hinamazawa? I wish there was a picture of a crowd who would make it so much more... impactful. Not just Hinamazawa. I see some people from Ok- Okinamaya too. You're right. Some of them are even here in their work uniforms. What an incredible sight. Looks like Oyu got really serious. 
<laughs> Apparently. This really is like old times. How oh, I've missed the way I felt during the damn conflict. Okay, what's going on today? Hey, Kamidakun. Well, I just called on the whole village to come here. I thought he'd only be able to get kids. How'd you get all these adults here too? You're making me weak in the knees, man. <laughs> Whoa, there's so many working the adults around. <laughs> Little girls are mankind's greatest treasure. Of course, as many of our comrades would gather here. Not only had many people shown up, but many different kinds of people too. I wonder how many people there are. Uh, I think there's well over a hundred so far. More people are still on their way too. My bar san I'm sorry for being late. What an amazing crowd you got together. So this is the power of Onikafuchi. I'd heard about this power before, but this is something else. This is reminding me more and more of the damn conflict. But to get this many people to show up, Kaijikun, you're amazing. You're the new face of Hinamazawa. Kaijikun, they sure are a lot of them, eh? Kimiyoshi-san, how many people did you talk to? Not quite sure. We just used the phone list and asked people to gather for a meeting at the Onikafuchi Guardians. Everyone left work and came right here. Hey, you there. This movement's an initiative an, an, an initiative <laughs> of the town council. So don't use a banner with the name of the Onikafuchi Guardians on it, okay? I see Keijikun's father. Hello. Hello, Rena-chan. Keiji, I'm here to support you. Your mom wanted to come here too, but she had to stay home and wait for the phone call. She says to do your best and keep at it. I will. Thank you. I've heard the stories about the dam conflict, but that's impressive. You're representing all of these people, right? Yeah. I was only representing five of us in the beginning, but it's grown so big now that I don't care if there are a hundred or a thousand people here. No matter what, I'll do everything I can to save my friend. Keiji, this is it. Yep. Our force of arms is more than enough. Those losers are peeping at us through the curtains right now. They must be quaking in their boots. The snakes in their boots. <laughs> so, sir, do you see all these people? What should we do? There's nothing to do, other than our jobs, of course. If they want to protest, let them. I need to leave for a business trip now, so you can handle them. <laughs> but there's a banner that says we want to talk with the head of the office. See? I'm sure it's a back door we can go through, right? <laughs> that banner was the same one that the Onikafuchi Guardians had used in the past. They brought along as many banners as they could reuse. This one said the head of the office, but originally it meant the head of the construction office. Of course, the head of the child consultation centre didn't know about that. You spoke with three of those representatives the other day. According to the people from City Hall, these Hinamazawans have a good memory. If they see you walking outside to the parking lot, they'll recognise your face. So, there's some people protesting by the back door too. What do you mean? Maybe they can't go out the back door then. <laughs> Are they going to kidnap me or something? During a damn conflict, it wasn't uncommon for people to get injured. If you can postpone your business trip, I'd recommend you do so. Well, I guess that'd be for the best. It's not an emergency, so I'll just stay here for today. In the next moment, the crackling noise of a speaker echoed outside. The megaphones? Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Can you hear me? This is the Hinamazawa Town Council. We're sorry for causing trouble in our neighbourhood. Testing, testing. They were adjusting the output of the speakers. A few trucks carrying those speakers were parked outside. The head of the consultation centre finally realised, in that moment, what it really meant to fight against the village of Hinamazawa. Finally realised. So many people out there. They might barge in at any minute. If they come inside, they'll disturb our work. Don't let them in. It was half an hour past the appointed assembly time. The mayor told me that there were still a few more people on their way. Even more people are going to show up. Then I counted up all of the people here already and found that there were more than 150 of them. I really doubt we can get this many to come back by Monday afternoon. Hopefully, we can finish this today. Alright, Kajikun. Let's begin. The mayor gave me the green light. He wanted us to chant our slogan in chorus before going inside. It really was like a real protest. Michan, do you think all of us can fit inside that tiny office? Do you think so? Because <laughs> we can't all fit. We split up into those who can go in and those spilling out. That's why we had everyone start chanting together before we go in. Sis? You can't break or kick anything today. Like I'd ever do something like that. You got me in so much trouble when you pretended to be me doing all that. <laughs> Hey, isn't that Luishi san? I didn't expect to see him here. Of course, he's my Mahjong friend. He came here to support me, even though he's not from Hinamazawa. My Bao san. Hello there. Uishi san. You're here right on time. We're getting ready to go inside right now. Uishi was accompanied by a few of his own men. He brought along four police officers in uniform. My Bao san, I need to have a little chat with you. Oh, hello there, my Mayor Kamiyoshi. Hello, Uishi san. What brings you here? 
I need to have a talk with the two of you right now. May I? Oh, and it can be in private, please. Can it be? Me? Yeah. What do you need from us? Well, you aren't government property here. Obstructing it for any given reason is prohibited. I was really taken aback. I thought we were just getting started, but Rishi san. And by that I mean the police are telling me to break up the crowd. What do you mean? The government isn't going to listen to the voice of its citizens? Look, we're not doing anything wrong. We're here to ask them to help Sadako. Why is that such a bad thing? You're protesting here without permission for one. Also, it's a policy at this child consultation centre, which allows the caretaker of the building to dismiss any client when he feels that they're disrupting their service. The caretaker of the building? Who is that? Well, that would be the head of the office here. What a cheap trick. You won't even let us speak our minds. Where are we supposed to protest then? If we have to get off the property, can we do it across the road? If you want to use the public roads, you have to get permission from the public safety department first. You have to contact them through the police. In other words, you have no choice but to disband for today. My, 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 wow, san. It seems they really do hate you. This is ridiculous. I don't believe this. We have so many people here in support Sadako. And you're saying we can't even talk to them? My friends soon all came running over. Ushisan explained the situation to them, and they reacted exactly the same way I did. No way. That's horrible. No matter what we say to them, all they do is jot down the amount of people in the group. That's why we brought lots of people here today. But they do have the right to refuse us. There's nothing we can do about that. We have to either listen to the police or disregard what they say entirely. <laughs> the damn conflict's been over for a while. I don't want to play that game anymore. Damn it. What are we going to do then? Do we just have to leave and come back later? Same thing will happen when we do. Let's just call the police again. The head of the consultation centre has no intention of letting us in there ever again. By the way, they came here at like 1 o'clock, didn't they? And 3 o'clock they shut, so... Must have really upset him. So what are we going to do now? We just have to be patient. If we can't protest on their property, we'll just have to do it from across the road. Seeing that every day will put a lot of pressure on them. That's going to take way too long. Government is like the Yakuza. It'll get more complicated if we keep making them mad. So even the Onokofuji Guardians can't do anything about this? How pathetic. Can't you do something about this, Uncle? Shion-chan, in a battle like this, you have to be patient. They're refusing us so blatantly, just like the construction construction office did in the dam conflict. So we'll just have to surround them and dig in for a prolonged fight. But that's not going to work. There's so many people here. I was supposed to end this today. Sadako didn't come to school again today. Her uncle called and claimed that her cold had resurfaced. He promised that she'd be back on Monday. But hearing that wasn't any relief to us. Today is Saturday, so there are two more days until then. Nothing's guaranteed for Sadako. In the world I imagined, it was too late to save Sadako by the day before Watanagashi. But Sadako in real life hasn't gotten to that point yet, but nothing guarantees that she'll still be fine in just two days. I don't know if she'll be the si she'll still be sane the next time we see her. So this is going to be a stalemate? Do we really have to wait until they make their final decision? No, Kaichikun. We have no time to waste for Sadako-chan. I just know that something... Something bad is going to happen. We got help from this many people. If we can't even go inside the building. Rika-chan said that with tears in her eyes. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I told Rika-chan that I could defeat anything if I put my mind to it. I don't want to give up here. Even a few days ago, we never imagined that we'd get this many supporters. We got approval from the town council, and even from Mion's grandma. What else am I supposed to do? What can we do to make our wish come true? Is it something that we haven't done yet? Son of a bitch. Rikachan, you don't have to look so sad. Me? We're doing everything we can. You believe that, right? Yeah, I believe we did everything we can do. Then we just have to wait for the wind to come. We just have to wait. I'm sure that a strong wind is on its way. When's that? Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Sadko was sleeping like the dead. If he didn't send her to school, that annoying teacher might come to harass him again. He really wanted her to go to school today. However, no matter how much he forced her to wake up, she collapsed and went back to sleep. He touched her forehead and realised that she had a high fever. If he sent her to school like that, they might say something about it. Well, it was like a cold then, isn't it? <laughs> In no choice but to call the school and tell him that she's sick again. Chie asked him many questions, but Tepe told her that she really was sick this time. Really was? He's admitting it. <laughs> One hour later, he realised he had so said something he shouldn't have to the teacher, exactly. Ever since he took Sadako in, there had been nothing but trouble. The teacher came to school, 
came to visit him the day after he took her. He received calls every so often too. They were all from the child consultation centre. Every single one of them told him to put Sadako on the phone. Tepo is still certain that Sadako wouldn't give him up, because of her fear that he'd destroy Satoshi's room if he did. However, he wasn't sure how long she'd keep her silence. In short, Tepe had no idea whether or not Sadako would continue to do as she was told. The only thing he knew for absolute certain was that he couldn't control her forever with fear alone. He could frighten her with just a look, but that fear wouldn't last for a very long time. He wanted to leave the house before Sadako got him into trouble. But in order to do that, he needed to find the bank book as soon as possible. Sadako was sleeping like an abandoned kitten inside of a wrinkled blanket. She was sweating heavily and breathing deeply. Both were signs of a very high fever. Tebe wasn't concerned in the least, of course. Instead, he felt that this was his chance. In that state, she wouldn't notice if he went into Satoshi's room. True. He promised her that he wouldn't mess around in there as long as she stayed obedient to him. In reality, he went inside Satoshi's room while Satko was at school, but he was very careful about putting everything back into place. However, by this point, he'd had enough. He was anxious to leave as soon as he could. Even Tebe could tell that Satko's fever wasn't from a cold, but from emotional distress. If she got even sicker, it could cause even more trouble for him. He slowly creeped up the stairs, heading for Satoshi's room. He tried to open the door slowly, but it was stuck on something. He assumed he just hit the furniture with the door, but in the next moment, crash, he heard the loud noise of falling metal. Something had been stuck behind the door, and it had knocked over something on the bookshelf. Tepe clicked his tongue. He had been planning to sneak into Satoshi's room while Sadako was asleep, and shortly after that he heard Sadako running up the stairs. She wasn't running just because she heard a noise. She was running because she heard a noise from Satoshi's room, and that meant that Tepe was trying to get inside it. She trapped it, <laughs> like she does. Stop, stop, don't go inside Nini's room. Ah, fuck, I was just going to look around for a minute. No damn luck. All I need is some cash. I know there's a bank book inside his room. I know that he hid it in there. Be a good girl and tell me where it is. I don't know anything about a bank book. It's not inside Nini's room. Don't mess around in there. Leave it alone until he comes home. Nini, Nini. Shut the fuck up. Sadko let out a dull cry as she went rolling across the floor. Ah. Uh, Nini. Sadko's screams echoed around the room. Hitting her would leave a mark. And then the child consultation said consultation would harass him and maybe more than that. As a man of violence, it was already stressful enough to be warned not to hit her. But once he hit her on impulse, like he just did, his restraint was all gone. Sadko was crying, holding her left cheek. She might have suffered the cut on the inside of it when he punched her. She had bloody drool, trickling out of a corner of her mouth. Wah! Fucking hell, that did it. The scent is going to be back here next week. I'm going to be in real shit if it's still swollen by then. Ah, God damn it. There's more trouble than it's worth. Quit with a nini already. You're supposed to be a broken record or something. Can it, little bitch? Tebby kicked her and she curled up on the floor. Ever since Rena had abandoned him, nothing good had happened at all. All he got was a whiny little girl. All she can do is cook and clean. Other than that, she just acts scared all the time. So when Sadko started crying like an infant, Tepe also lost his mind. I said, shut up. Didn't you hear me? Who are you whining to? Damn it, damn it, damn it. Ushi-san, will you please leave us alone for today? Sadko's in danger as we speak. Hey now. If you touch me, I can arrest you for obstructing the law. Damn it. Stop it, Kai-chan. He's just trying to piss you off. Hey, old man, you won't live long with that kind of attitude. <laughs> oh, now I'm scared. If you keep on talking to me like that, I'll arrest you for threatening an officer. Calm down, Kajikun. He's on our side. What? What are you saying, Rena? Rena? Can't you see? He's being nice to you right now. He's saying these things because he's a policeman, but I think he's still on your side. If he really wanted to make us leave, he wouldn't be talking to us like this. He'd simply use force. But he's still blocking our way right now. How can he still be on our side? Oishi-san, you've got a call on the cruiser from the chief. Oh, thanks. I gotta go for now. Start vacating the area, please. If you take another step forward, I'll take it as a declaration of war. Got it memorised? God damn it. Hello, Oishi here. Reading you loud and clear. Oishi-san, how's the situation there? It's fine. Everyone's being perfectly reasonable. There are quite a lot of people here, so it's taking time to break them up. Really? We're still getting calls from the Child Consultation Centre. They're wondering when you can get them out of here. They'll leave soon. I've already spoken to the leader. It's taken time for him to explain it to his people. If they call again, tell them to wait for a little bit. I heard that the Onagafuchi Guardians are back in action. Seems like it's not getting too messy this time. Yes, yes. The Zam conflict has been over for a long time. 
Just give them a little bit to pack up and leave. Ushisan, how could you lie to him like that? You haven't made any progress in persuading the leader yet. <laughs> now, now, was that really a lie? The chief warned us that this could turn into a riot. I think we should call for help and shut this down before anything happens. Come chan don't be mean. Excuse me? He's got this many people together in order to help his friend. That's no small feat, you know. The whole village is here, and that means he persuaded Oyu Sanzaki. It wouldn't be easy for a young boy like him to persuade the Empress. You think Oyu Sanzaki is back in this crowd? The girl they're trying to help is Satko Hojo, the daughter of the dam supporters. It's hard to believe that the villagers will be trying to save her. There was a thick wall between them and the Hojo family, but he broke that wall down in just a few days. Actually, I've been following his progress up to this point. I saw him at the Watanagashi planning meeting. He's a damn courageous boy. The elders screamed and yelled at him, but he wasn't scared at all. He magnificently brought them over to his side. After that, they told him that they'd support him if he could also persuade Oyu. Since he's here today, he apparently also succeeded in doing that. He's going to be someone big one day. You should probably get close to him while you still can. <laughs> anyway, you're taking it easy today. You're normally very direct, so I'm surprised when you started negotiating with him. I want to see my Barasan earn little credit today. Ushi said something they shouldn't say as a policeman. Kumage had to struggle to understand what he meant. Giving Uishi a thin smile, he asked him a question. Do you want to leave without disbanding them? Nah, we don't need to treat them special. You don't know anything about the Onagafuji Guardians. You and my Barasan both. They're not as weak as you think. You'll see. You want to wait and see what they do, huh? As usual, we're doing a thankless job. <laughs> One cigarette. Kumage accepted the offer, taking the cigarette from Uishi's hand. In next moment, two black vehicles stopped short in front of the building. They broke screaming under the stress. There they came. Look closely, Kumachan. Several men wearing well-tailed suits emerged from the vehicles. Some of them looked like muscle-headed gangsters. Some of them more resembled intelligent businessmen. There was a clearly overbearing old man in a hakama with a crest. What looked like a whole circle of Yakuza leaders arrived after him. Is Kaiju Maibara come present? Where is he? I'm Kaiju Maibara. How many? How may I help you? Don't worry, on your side. Who, who are you exactly? Oh, hey uncle. Why are you here? I can't, I can't believe you actually showed up. Shion and Mion's surprised reactions made me feel nervous. Keijigun, you're the leader here. There's no need to hesitate. Let's go. The group of men clapped me on the shoulders, but I can't go. The police are here. Alright, stop right there, boys. I'm Uishi from the Okinomaya PD. Good afternoon. Where are you all heading? Who do you think you are? How could you stop law-abiding citizens from conducting a protest? Oh, Sansaki-sensei. We're here because the child consultation center called us here. Sansaki-sensei? Is he a teacher for some school? Wait, no, I don't have time to joke around. This man, Nakama, must be the Sansaki family's representative on the prefectural assembly. I heard that he's a really scary guy when he raises his voice, just like Mion's grandma. Shut up, get away, you damn pig. Who gave you orders to get in their way? Ha <laughs> the chief of police ordered us here. I can't disobey him, you know. Can I a police chief? He's going to hear some real complaints from me later. Tell him to be ready. Ushi's partner was doing his best not to laugh. Okay, okay, I'll relay that message to him. Anyway, the rules in this city. Like how the caretaker of a building can order people to vacate their property. If he thinks that they can cause trouble for his business. As Ushi-san explained in a strange half-troubled and half-delighted manner, one of the intelligent-looking guys started talking instead of Representative Sanzaki. Hello, I'm the attorney Sanzaki from, from the Sanzaki Law Consulta Consultancy Office. I went over the laws that apply to the Child's Consultation Centre. They claim is unjust, and it could be considered an abuse of their official authority. Here's a copy of the regulations. Furthermore, Keiichi Maibara-san is the appointed leader of the Hinamazawa Unified Council. It's the power of attorney issued by the Council. The Hinamazawa Unified Council is a good Samaritan organisation of citizens formed under the observation of the Shishibung Local Government Section. That makes him a proper representative of the organisation. He went through the proper channels. Rejecting his appeal is a clear abuse of authority and violates the municipal public servant regulations. Therefore, the order made by the head of the Child Consultation Centre is unlawful, and if the police continue to interfere with this movement, then... Okay, okay, I understand. My apologies. Well then, you can carry on, everyone. That's what you should have said from the beginning. Let's go, Keijigun. Wait, I might be disrupting their business if everyone goes inside. Don't worry, only the representatives are going in. Is even that going to interrupt their business? With four coaches in the visitor's room, I assume they can easily hold 10 people in there. Ah, I guess you know better. Please go. Go on ahead then. My Barakun, let's go. Nobody's going to stop us now. Oh, yes sir. Hey, Rena, Mion, Shion, Mikachan. We're going in. Yeah, let's go. 
Is this all part of Oyu's plan? Probably. I didn't think she talked to these guys too. No matter how you look at it, it's the Sonsaki family giving us the most support. I wonder what made the, ha the hag change her mind. I'm not surprised at all. I always believed that Mi-chan's grandma would help us. Really? I said some nasty things to her last night. Right now I could kiss her. Alright everyone, we're going inside. Yeah! Look out cheers, the main event's about to begin. My bar san Please save Hojo-san. Help rescue Satko-chan. Hey my bar boy Good luck. It's your show. We wish you luck. Angel Mock Grenadiers. Secure the path of retreat. Support the charge. Okay, show us what you got. I will. I'm gonna get them. My bar san We'll wait for you here. We look forward to hearing the good news. Yes, bring us good news. I'll be waiting for you too. I pumped my fist in the air in response to their high expectations. We entered the child consultation centre, backed by the power of the Sonsaki family. I finally made it. It was cool inside the building, and like the outside world. I could still hear the crowd, but at a lower volume. It was loud enough to hear their cheers. The staff in the building must have known who we were. They tried to concentrate on their work as if they didn't see us. Hello, sir. How may I help you today? I'm Maribaro Kaichi. I'm here to request that Sadako Hojo be put under protection immediately. Just go get the person in charge here. A representative of the, Hinema of the Hinamazawa Town Council is here to see him. He's unable to see you at this time. I'll take a message for him. Hello. I'm a lawyer from the Sansaki Law Consultation Consultancy Office. I'll get it. <laughs> for the purpose of this future use, I will be recording our conversation from this point forward. We would like to be treated responsibly by the Child Consultation Centre. I'll try and see if he's available. Please wait for a moment. Have a Yamakun? It's been a while. R representative... Representative Sonzaki, how have you been? I'm here today as a member of the Hinamazawa Town Council. May I see the head of the office, please? Of course. Hey you, take them to the reception area inside the boss's room and serve them some tea. I guess the power of a representative can really get public officials moving. I heard that there are both prefectural and municipal representatives in the Sonzaki family. We have the power of both of them today, and that means we have nothing to fear. We were inside his office, but the head of the office wasn't to be found. I'm sure he's somewhere in this building, or the exit's blocked. There's no way he could escape from us. He better not be thinking that he can hide from us all day. The head of the office, in fact, was peeping out through the blinds of the meeting room on the second floor. He was shaking in fear. Why are they inside the building? What are the police doing? Well, actually, both the prefectural and municipal Sonsaki representatives are here. They have a lawyer with them, too. They're asking for an answer, but only management has the authority to respond. Okay, I've got it. Today's Saturday. It's nearly three, right? I'll just stay here until then. Have them leave after we close up. Meanwhile, I'll talk with the municipal manager about what to do next. I thought he told you to concede. He said something about a town council. I was expecting a bunch of neighbourly old men. I never thought I'd see representatives and lawyers in Yakuza. Who would have thought there would be 200 people out there? Hmm. That's... Hinamazawa. They tried to warn him. <laughs> anyway, the office is closing in 10 minutes. I'm sure they'll threaten me if I meet with them. But I'm not going to concede. That's my duty as a civil servant. I've been working for the government for 40 years. I'm not ashamed to boast about that. I'll never compromise just because some gangster threatens me. In the next moment, the phone in the conference room rang loudly. The head of the office nearly jumped out of his skin. Scared even of the phone, he told the manager to tell whoever it was that he wasn't there. Hello? This is Haraya Hariyama. Oh, thank you. I'll let him know. Sir, it's the municipality. Municipality, Colin. Hello? I'm in deep trouble. There are about 200 people surrounding the consultation centre right now. They even have representatives on their side. Uh, what should I do? I did tell you this would happen. It's your job as a municipal government to control trouble within the town councils. Is there something about this? It's your sworn duty to take care of this. That's not our job. Our job is to support the growth of the local communities of the region. And... I don't care. Can you do something about this? At this point, you have no choice but to accept the request. I think you should stop being so stubborn about policy. A government is there for its citizens. Isn't that right? Can't you just peacefully accept the people? You're an official too, aren't you? How dare you take the side of the town council? I'm not going to concede. I'm going to follow the regulations. A civil servant's duty is to conduct business impartially. I've never broken that rule in my entire career. I passed the administrator's exam because I always follow the rules. Well, that's your decision. We'll do our best to help. But I told you. Didn't I? I know I did. I know I told you not to get them upset. Fine, then I won't ask for your help anymore. I'm hanging up the phone. Click. He's even cutting off his help. <laughs> Sir, even if you manage to get away from them today, they'll come back again on Monday. What are you going to do then? I'm sure that the mayor knows about this by now. 
This will definitely come up at the weekly meeting. I haven't done anything that would upset the mayor. No matter what he says to me, that's what I'll tell him. Eek. The phone rang once again. Also once again, the head of the office trembled in fear. The manager had to reluctantly pick up the phone. Yes. Eh? Can you transfer it here? Yes, this is the right office. One moment, please. Sir? You have a call from City Hall. City Hall? Not the municipal offices. Who is it now? It's the mayor. Oh. <laughs> yes, that's right. The members of the town council in Hinamazawa. Yes, I understand. Please listen to what they have to say. No, that's not true. It's important to be impartial and unbiased, but you must act according to the occasion. Yes, please do so. After you're done, please come to the mayor's office and give me your report. I expect you by 6pm. Thank you very much. The man spoke with a gentle demeanour, but in a tone that didn't allow objection. Then the elderly man in the double suit set the receiver down. Thank you for that. Or you were sitting on the couch in the reception area. <laughs> Akane was there with her too. So she was there with the mayor. Not a problem. It's been a while since you visited City Hall. I was surprised to see you here today. Sorry for the surprise. If I can ask someone a favour, I, I want to see them in person. Thank you, really. It's no problem at all. I'm sorry that our staff were so impolite. I should have taught them better. Maintaining a good relationship between municipal governments and town councils is vital. So he says. However, the mayor couldn't believe that Empress Sonzaki came all the way to see him just to save one little girl. It's a huge deal when Oyu Sonzaki comes directly to his office. It's also unusual for her to do things indirectly to begin with. Rather than leading the charge herself, she was having Keiichi Maibara save Sadako. The mayor understood that she was doing this so Keiichi Maibara would get all the credit. Because of that, he was very interested in this young Keiichi Maibara. He sounds like quite the young man. I can't believe that he's gone so far just to save his friend from a, an abusive relative. I know. He's one of a kind. I'm not worried about the future of Hinamazawa as long as someone like him is around. I can die peacefully now. Please, mother, don't joke around like that. Yeah. <laughs> It was worth living this long if I was able to meet someone like him. Take care of that Keiichi boy if something happens again. You've grown so fond of him. He's still mad at me for not having any boys. Hmm. It was now 3pm and I heard the announcement that the centre was closing. The head of the office finally showed up in the room. He seemed like a totally different person. When I first met him, he had a cold attitude, responded to questions with blunt answers. But now he was much nicer and agreed with everything we said. I guess the power we held must have intimidated him. If I was alone, I would have never gotten him to listen to me. It's thanks to everyone's support that I'm able to talk to him now. I understand. I'm very sorry for all the confusion. We will take action immediately. Manager, please call hildre house right now. Yes, sir. Sadako, finally. You're finally free. Tepe stopped kicking her as he heard the phone ring. He could ignore the call, but if it was someone from the child consultation centre, they might become suspicious of him. He'd hurt Satko enough to leave bruises. He couldn't let them visit, so he had no choice but to deal with them over the phone. <laughs> That's enough for now. You better remember where you hid that bank book by the time I come back. Ugh. All Satko could do was curl up and cry. Hello, who is it? Good afternoon. This is the Shishibong Child Consultation Centre. Again? Do you guys have nothing better to do? Why don't you stop calling me and work on your other cases? You're getting paid with the taxes I pay, you know. We're very sorry to interrupt you. One of our social workers will be visiting your home shortly. May I get permission for them to enter the premises, please? No way. We're cleaning the whole house right now. We can't have any visitors today. Come back again some other time. The consultation centre wouldn't give up. Tepe wanted to hang up the phone, but if he did, he knew that they'd show up for sure. I was told that Satko-san didn't come to school today. She's home, isn't she? If she's really sick, she should be resting at home, I expect. There's something quite urgent that I need to ask you. What the hell do you need to for? I'm a guardian, so I'll answer you instead. You're refusing to put Satko-san on the phone? I'm not refusing. I'm just saying that I'll answer your questions in her place. Can't you see what I'm saying? What's your name, anyway? I'm asking you one more time. May I speak with Satko-san, please? <laughs> Damn it. Bad timing for him. <laughs> He thought dealing with the government officials was a bit like playing whack-a-mole. If you hit them hard enough, they won't show up for a while. But today, whoever was on the phone seemed to pro provocative and self-assured. Tebe sensed that they'd definitely come to the house if he didn't put Sadko on. And if they sounded like that over the phone, if they came to the house, they might be bringing along more than just a couple of people. For all Tebe knew, they might even bring a police officer. If they did, he couldn't turn them away at the entrance. He knew too well just how scary police officers could be. Look, wait a minute. 
I'll go and wake her up. Give me some time. He covered the phone with his hand and spoke to Sadako downstairs. Oh, Sadako. The child consultation centre wants to ask you something. Can you come to the phone, please? Even though he had just been beating her, Teppo was addressing Sadako in a sweet, phony voice. It would disturb people to hear him talk like that. Sadako knew that this sweet voice was the scariest tone of voice he had. She couldn't refuse after hearing him talk like that, so she obeyed him and went upstairs. Tebe grabbed Sadako's shoulders with all his might and whispered in her ear, No matter what happens, we're a happy family, right? Don't you dare forget that, alright? Yes. Remember, if you upset me, I'll destroy Satoshi's room. If you behave well, I promise you that I will never enter his room again. Is that a deal? Hmm? Huh? Huh? He squeezed her shoulders even tighter. Sadako contorted her face in pain. We're making up now, right? Hmm? Huh? Yes. We're a happy family. Tebe gave the phone to Sadako as soon as she nodded. He stood behind her, continuing to grip her shoulders tight. It was like a raptor gripping its prey with its sharp talons. Sadako Hojo-san, this is Har Hariyama speaking from the child consultation center. How's everything going so far? You having any problems with Tebe-san? The volume on the phone was low enough that Tebe couldn't hear what they were saying. However, he squeezed Sadako's shoulders harder, urged her to say something, because her silence could be interpreted as a negative answer. Yes. Everything's working out between my uncle and I. You don't have any problems with him? Hmm? Ah, sure, go ahead. Hello? Sadako? It's me, Keiji. You okay? Ah, yeah. It's safe here. Sadako, we're about to come save you. If you admit that you need help, the Child Consultation Centre will put you under their protection immediately. It's not just the centre either. The Mayor of Shishibone City is supporting us too. Crazy, isn't it? It's all thanks to the Sanzaki family. Mion's grandma is doing all this for you. Sadako always felt bitter toward the Sanzaki family, because they were often the ones talking about her behind her back. She hated Oyu most of all. It didn't make sense to her that Oyu would do anything to help her. I know you went through a lot of hard times after the dam conflict. I didn't notice it, but you were being treated coldly for a long time. But I took care of all those people for you. No one will ever treat you badly in Hinema's hour again. I wish I could show you all the people that have gathered around the Child Consultation Centre right now. Everyone from Hinamazawa is here to save you. Even skipping the preparation for tomorrow's festival. Hmm? Huh? Oh, sure. I have a message from the Sonzaki family. Mion's grandma said to say hello to you. She's sorry about how she treated you. She wants you to come visit her house sometime. You hear that? She's on your side now. She went to see the mayor in person just for you. But you know, the same goes for us too. We've been coming to the Child Consultation Centre every day since you were taken away. Everyone's been supporting us, and all for your sake. Now we have the whole village of the whole village of Hinamazawa on our side. Hang on, Rika-chan wants to talk to you. Sadako? Chika. Rika. Keiji brought it, brought it all to an end for you. The people of Hinamazawa aren't going to be mean to you anymore. So no one will ignore you when we go shopping together. They won't treat you differently from me anymore. No one will treat you coldly anymore. Sadako wasn't sure if she should feel happy or sad that Rika noticed how badly the villagers were treating her. All she could do was let out a bitter laugh. I can't believe that. Indeed. I can't believe it either. Rika? Sadko was surprised. She was surprised to hear Rika's voice sound so mature over the phone. She almost sounded like a different person. When you were taken away by your uncle, I thought it was an unchangeable fate. I gave up, thinking that there was nothing but a dead end ahead of us. I'm sure you felt that way too. But I found out that there's no such thing as fate. There's no dead end ahead of us. Kaiji broke that wall down and smashed it into a million pieces. Sadako, don't give in to misfortune anymore. We're almost there. All you need to do is nod your head. But I I have to get stronger. That's because of how much you suffered. You're trying to overcome that. You felt guilty towards Satoshi because you hid behind his back when you were abused by your aunt. I know that you're trying to take ta type his abuse as a form of self-punishment. I understand you're trying to get stronger as an apology toward your brother. I can respect that courage and it shows how much you've grown up. Satoshi would be proud of you if he was here right now. He would pat your head. He would pat it so gently. Nimi, did you really believe what I just said? That's not good, Sadako. You're nowhere near as strong as Satoshi. Not at all. Because words were suddenly toned with malice, penetrating Sadako's heart the moment she thought she was saved. You think that taking this abuse will make you stronger? But is this really that different from last year? You're just waiting here for Satoshi to come home. You're waiting for him to come back and save you again. You don't even know what kind of strength Satoshi held within him. Satoshi didn't just cry and quake in fear like you're doing. He fought. He fought his horrible aunt. He fought in order to save you. Remember the sight of Satoshi standing up to your aunt, the one you cried in terror from, with his arms spread wide to protect you? 
Satoshi was just as scared as Satoko was. All she'd ever seen was her brother's back. She had no idea what kind of expression he was wearing on his face. He didn't want to stand in front of his furious aunt, but he had no choice if he wanted to protect his sister. Satoko never once saw how scared he was, and she never once saw how courageous he was in spite of that. Satoshi fought. He didn't just take the violence that was dealt to him. He fought it and struggled against it. I was no different from you once. I stopped fighting because I gave up. I stopped struggling against it. I chose to accept fate and quietly endure my pain. I thought it was a waste of time to seek help. Just like you, I was just waiting for someone to come along who would change my circumstances. But I've decided to fight. That's why I'm on the phone with you now. I'm going to change this fate on my own. I'm going to persuade you to nod your head. Sadko, he's right behind you, isn't he? Yes, he's here. Look at his face now. See how evil and scary he looks. Realize how brave Satoshi was to fight back against that furious face. If you want to give something back to Satoshi, don't just take his abuse without seeking help. You have to do what Satoshi did for you. Can't you recognize that? Sadko slowly looked back at her uncle, though she was afraid to do so. He was wearing an unpleasantly broad grin, while gripping his shoulder so tightly. Ultimately, it wasn't even really about dealing with her aunt or uncle. It was about dealing with her fear. Satoshi faced his fear. He could have chosen to run from it, or to sit and take it, but he fought for his little sister instead. He fought that fear and didn't falter. And what was Sadko doing? She believed that the violence she was suffering was the punishment she deserved. However, Rika wasn't wrong. Sadko wasn't trying to gain strength at all. She was only shutting herself out until someone came to save her. She wasn't doing anything on her own. She was only waiting for someone else to do something about it. Satoshi faced it. He faced his fear. That was his strength. Are you scared? Are your teeth chattering? Are you feeling shivers running down your spine? That's exactly how Satoshi felt when he tried to protect you. You have to understand that. Do you, do you know what Satoshi wanted from you? Do you know what he was trying to show you? If you don't know, Satoshi will never come back to you. Hmm? What's the deal? What's taking so long? Satko was consumed by fear. Her teeth were chattering and she felt shivers running down her spine. <laughs> yep. And that was what Satoshi felt every time she cried. Show us your strength, Satko. Show Satoshi how much you've grown up over the past year. Show Satoshi that you've grown as brave as he is. Mika, but I... Even if she asked for help that very minute, Tepe wasn't just going to disappear. Once she asked for help, she'd need to survive until someone physically came to her house to rescue her. Satko ached all over her body. Her wounds were pulsing along with her heartbeat, and she could taste the blood in her mouth. It wasn't as easy as Rika made it sound. One nod wasn't going to solve everything at once. They had no idea how hard it was for her to nod. What did her Nini look like when he protected her? She couldn't remember his face, but she remembered the strength in his words. And she even may have heard a little bit of fear in his voice. But even so, he still fought. He faced his fears and fought for her sake. Sadako was scared, just like Rika said. Her teeth were chattering, and she felt shivers running down her spine. But she had to face him. She had to challenge him. To fight him. And to break the cycle. Sadako, I'm going to give the phone to an employee of the consultation centre. Tell them with your own words. Yes. Yes. Show me that courage. Hello again. It's Hariyama from the Child Consultation Centre. Please allow me to ask you one more time. Are there any problems between you and your uncle? Sadako looked at Tepe again as she listened to the question. Looked straight into the face of terror. All she ever did was hide behind Satoshi's back. Show me that courage. It wasn't only Rika. Her Nini was watching her too. Me. Excuse me? Could you please repeat that? Help me! The moment the words left her mouth, mouth, Tepe clocked his niece upside her head with every bit of strength she had, he had in him. Sadako rolled down the hallway still clutching the telephone receiver. Oh, Sadako, you finally betrayed me, huh? I hate you. Get out of my house. This house belongs to my Nini and me. This house belongs to my family. I hate you. Get out of here. You, you little bitch. Wah. Wow. Sadako wasn't going to just take a beating any longer. Instead, she spread her arms wide and jumped onto her uncle. Of course, that wasn't going to hurt Tepe at all. Sadako was as weak as a newborn puppy to him. That was, however, the best attack she had at her disposal. Sadako was fighting for the first time in her life. She decided to stop waiting for somebody to save her. In the end, Sadako was the only one who could save herself. Enduring her uncle's violence had never meant anything at all. She had thought she learned something from her nini, but she had been mistaken this whole time. What's with that look in your eyes, huh? I'm going to push your front teeth in. Just as Tepe raised his fist, someone loudly hammered on the front door. Tepe Hojo, open up, it's the police. Tepe couldn't help but jump in surprise. It had barely been a minute since Sadako asked for help over the phone. Open up this door. If you don't, we're going to break it down. 
How do you say no? How sad go, Jan? Sadako chan asked for help. The child consultation centre is going to take action now. But she's still in danger. Tepe might kill her for betraying him. We'd heard a violent noise right after she asked for help. In other words, Sadako had been brave enough to do that in front of her uncle. We have to get there right away. Can someone give us a ride? Several of the villagers who came by car started their engines. The crowd had started to realise what was going on. Damn it. We're coming as fast as we can, Sadako. Oh, don't worry about that, my bao -san. The police entered the Hojo residence not a moment ago. He wouldn't have had any time to hurt Sadako-chan. What? But why? No idea. It's a mystery to me. Anyway, did you break up this crowd already? I'll be leaving for now, so excuse me. Have a good year. <laughs> Ushi must have contacted someone as soon as he heard Sadako asking for help. The police had surrounded Sadako-chan's house ahead of time. I get it. They were suspecting him of Rina's murder. It'll make sense now. Wait, who's Rina? <laughs> Get in the car, everyone. Let's hurry back to Hinamazawa. There were several officers combing the Hojo residence. Sadako was sitting by the porch, talking with another officer. She had some painful looking bruises all over her face. Sadako chan, are you okay? You? Ho ho ho, do I look okay to you? Coach. She needs treatment right away. Let's take her to the clinic. Can you walk, Sadako-chan? Sadako nodded to the coach and stood up. It looked painful for her, but even so, I felt relieved to see her better than I expected. However, the cruel bruises inflicted over her body were all too horrible to look at. I'll never forgive that man for abusing a little girl like her. My body shivered in anger. Sadako. Ho ho ho. Did you see what I did, Rika? I can act when it counts. Yes. I saw your courage. You won. You broke the bonds of fate. Both Rika Chan and Sadako cried and hugged each other. I soon heard another car come in. I immediately knew who it had to be. It was Uishi San's police cruiser. We should have acted more quickly. I'm sorry we weren't more help. No, don't be sorry. If not for you, Uishi San, he would have done even more horrible things to her. Thank you so very much. I guess you can be a nice person sometimes. So how's she doing? The coach is looking after her. She was injured pretty badly. Oh, Kumachan, what happened to Tepe? We got him. Kamiyama-san took him to the station. So he won't come back to this house ever again? It's not like he's going to get the death penalty or a life sentence. I don't want to think about this, but he might come back someday. Yeah, well, we won't let him. I'll make sure he can never come back to this village. Shouldn't he be arrested? Oh my, oh my. Successor of the Sonzaki family is saying such scary things already. You can't threaten him or anything, you know? I'm not going to threaten him. I'm just going to advise him that he should never come back to Inamazawa or Okinomaya. Otherwise, something terrible might happen to him. Uh, I guess advice isn't too bad then. <laughs> so is Sadako Chan free now? Is that really it? Is it over? I don't know. I think there will be more issues to come. Once Tepe loses his parental rights, they'll need to find a new guardian for Sadako. Someone has to take care of her. But there's no need to worry. I'm sure that the Sonzaki family is going to back her up. We'll make sure Sadako's happy. Irie took Sadako to the clinic. He says her injuries aren't as bad as they look, though. Really? That's good to hear. I wonder if she can leave the clinic by tomorrow. I wonder. I'm sure those injuries will take more than a day to heal. That's not what she's talking about me. Tomorrow's the Watanagashi Festival. It's been a really hectic week, but if we can all go to the festival together, I think that will be a happy ending. Right. It'll serve as proof that we got a happy world back with our own hands. I agree. I'm sure Sadako wants to see Kai Chan's auction in action. <laughs> I almost forgot about that. That'll seem like nothing after all this, surely. Sadako will be coming for sure. Before I knew it, lots of people from the village had joined us. They were the same people who came to the child consultation centre to support us. They wanted to know if Sadako was safe. Considering her injuries, safe might not be the right word. However, she's free from the curse of her uncle now. Her emotional scars will slowly heal. We'll be there for her, as her friends. No, it wasn't just us anymore. The whole village is going to be there for her. The ghosts of the dam conflict won't haunt Sadako any longer. It was a very long week. In this one week. 
we united, we fought, we overcame, and we won. It was an uneasy victory, however the price we paid was more than worth it. Tomorrow is the Watanagashi Festival, the biggest festival in the village. It's a huge event where we worship the guardian of the village, Oishiro Sama. Oishiro Sama is a god who united two enemy peoples. The curse on the Hojo family has disappeared. Satko is truly going to be a part of the village. We'll all be playing at the festival together. This is a perfect happy ending. When our ordinary days were taken from us, we all felt so powerless. But now we have everything back. What else can you call that but a miracle? No, you can't actually call it that. Miracles can be created when everyone works together. What's impossible to do alone becomes possible when everyone joins forces. With everyone's power, we were able to make impossible things happen. And that's only a natural outcome of everyone doing their best together, so it's not a miracle. In other words, it was inevitable. The old legends in this village tell us that Oyashiro Sama made it possible for humans and demons to live together. I'm not sure what that story really means, but I'm sure that Oyashiro Sama made something impossible happen. We can be proud of what we did. I'm sure Oyashiro Sama is proud too. Hey, my bar boy! We did it! You pulled it off. It was worth showing up every day. My supporters cheered me on. They were all glad that Sadako was finally safe. The sense of accomplishment at saving Sadako finally hit us. We hugged each other, showing praises for our struggle. Oh, next day. I'm liking that effect is started in this arc. I think it started in this arc. We were gone. <clears throat> Satko and Rika chan were already there waiting for me. While the injuries on her face, covered with band-aids, looked painful, Satko seemed to be full of life. It almost looked as though her wounds were from playing too hard or something. So you stayed at the clinic last night? Yes, I told him I was fine, but the coach wanted to keep an eye on me. If that's what the doctor said, then you should listen to him. Ah, I see. You were scared to stay at the clinic alone, weren't you? I heard there were lots of ghosts inside hospitals. Sadako can't sleep without me. <laughs> oh, why can't you sleep without her? Why? That's because Pikachu is the only one who can give her comfort. <laughs> no sooner had Xion finished that sentence than a bucket went flying into her face. Sadako started chasing Xion in circles like they were playing tag. I really miss this rambunctious fun. I thought I'd never see this again. I felt the same. But we got it back. We did this. I think you did the most. It was your idea to go to the Child Consultation Centre, and you were the one who asked everyone for their support. I agree. I think Kai-chan contributed the most. Most people in Hinamazawa know who Kaichi Maibara is by now. How? Oh. Is Kaichi-kun going to be a popular guy now? Is he? Hmm. <laughs> I bet he'd be incredibly popular. Popular among old ladies, that is. Ah, I really I envy him. I'd be fine with that if I could divide their ages by three. Many people were wearing yukatas. It was still June, but felt more like it was the middle of summer. Here comes Wat Watanagashi. Once we finished climbing the stairs, we could see the festival and the crowd enjoying it. The Furude Shrine was packed with people, leaving the grounds looking nothing like their usual quiet self. Lanterns of various colours were hung about, and people were swarm swarming the various festival booths, giving the whole place an unorganised yet pleasant atmosphere. What a crowd. I had no idea there were even this many people in Himazawa. Everyone comes to this festival. I think at least half of the population of the village is here. There's more than just them. The neighbouring town councils and youth groups are invited too. I see. We only have a few students in our school. That explains why there are so many kids around today. Hearing the happy cheers of children is the best part of the festival. She's right. I'm in agreement there. There were lots of booths around too. They were by far the best part of the festival. Booths selling tack. Takayaki, yakisoba, shaved ice, apricot candy, sauce senbai, chocolate bananas. There's a yo-yo game, goldfish game, shooting gallery, countless booths here. I'd love to try chocolate bananas. They, they sound good. Those booth runners all came from the city. You can't call it a festival without festival booths. So we can have a battle in every one of them, huh? I'm not going to lose today. Yeah, same here. Let's do it. Yellow. Sorry I'm late. Am I the last one? Everyone's here now, huh? Once that club gets together, there's no way we can just sit back and enjoy the festival. Of course not. <clears throat> We're doing it again this year. 
This Pat Tanagashi Festival, for this six of us, will be the Battle of Six Evils. Sadako, there's no reason to hold back this year. Let's enjoy the festival with all our might. Oh ho ho, you don't even need to mention it. I too declare that I will be the victor. Yes, Sadako. You go, girl. <laughs> you go, girlfriend. <laughs> Let's put everything that happened before tonight behind. <laughs> That happened before tonight behind us. Let's play with everything we got. It's been a good week since we all got together. Yeah, yeah. Tonight we're all enjoying this festival to its fullest. <laughs> I love how they put the light art and stuff by you. Straight after saving Sadako, it just feels more. a lot more happy. The voice is gone. <laughs> Everyone's there. <laughs> I don't care what's meant to be going on. <laughs> Just everyone having fun, I suppose. I, I guess that's what I'm saying. As we enjoy, oh, that's new. As we enjoy the festival, many people call out Sadko. Some of them show concern for injuries. Some of them express their sympathy, and some of them offer her support. Sadko must have been very happy to hear all that. She says it's strange to see people treating her like this, but I think she's just trying to hide her true feelings. I'm sure she realizes just how much the village changed for her. I'm trying to read fast in case it carries on, but it doesn't look like it will. I have to click. Hi, hello. You all seem to be enjoying yourselves. Hi, Vikitran. I'm here, like I promised. The festival sure has grown into a splendor. Who's this guy? You know him, Rika? Akasaka is never there when I need him. <laughs> huh? What are you talking about? Did I do something to make you upset? Yeah. While you were at the hot springs with your wife, things sure got hectic around here. Hell, oh, Rika-chan's talking with some strange older guy. I wonder if he's someone she knows. I wonder. Who is he? Who is he? Introduce him to this old man too. When Akasaka showed up, I'd still believed that fate could be changed to the power of a single hero alone. But that was my mistake. Miracles are not made by one person. They can only be achieved by everyone working together. So it was wrong for me to expect him to just magically change my fate. Even if he had been here for me, I might have been disappointed in him for not being able to do anything. He didn't do anything wrong, but I acted all bitter towards him anyway. I feel guilty after saying what I did. I really shouldn't act this way anymore. I should celebrate the fact that, after so many years, we're together again. Hey, my bow boy, I heard what you did. I heard about it too. I heard you fought oyu -san with a sword until she finally gave in. Good on you. I, I didn't do that. We just had peaceful negotiation. Still, I'm proud of you. You let everyone and actually negotiated with the centre. Hey you, I'll give you some apricot candy. How many do you want? Wow, Keichikun, you're so popular today. I'm sure Keichi's into old ladies too. I don't know what Rika's trying to say, and I don't even want to know. <laughs> People are talking to Keiichi too. The whole village knows about his leadership skills now, especially in how he persuaded Oyu. Everyone had been aware for a very long time that they were only treating Satko harshly because of the tradition formed since the dam conflict. However, Keiichi is the one who destroyed that cycle, and the people of Hinamazawa, both young and old, see him as a hero. With the whole village talking about Keiichi, of course the auction he hosted ended up being a great success. Though he was shy in the beginning, he put his heart and soul into the show, managed to entertain all the onlookers. Good on him. <laughs> I'm sure Keiichi will bring many more good things to the village. The elders especially are glad to see a heroic young man like him. Oh, that's the guy who helped us yesterday. Thank you so very much for your assistance. Oh, I should have introduced him to you then. This is my uncle S Saburu was in the prefectural assembly. This is my other uncle Ken, he's in the city council. Sorry that we were late yesterday. We got lost on our way there. <laughs> no, no, you both were a great help. I was really impressed to see the power of elected officials. Well, we chose not to fight in the place of the citizens. Of course we're strong. We're glad Sadako-chan's safe. Talk to us again if there's anything you need. We'd be glad to help. They rubbed Sadako's head while they spoke. Th thank you very much. 
There are a number of powerful Sonsaki people standing around the main tent. All of them are people who helped us yesterday. Everyone except Sadako bows out of respect. Till just a few days ago, those people had nothing but terrible things to say about the Hojo family. It was Kaichi, of course, who cleared all that away. I'm sure they regret their rudeness, and I'm sure, also sure that they'll never discriminate against Sadako again. In fact, they bow to her instead, and apologise for all they've done. They promise her that they'll be glad to help her in the future if she ever needs anything. You must be proud of your son. Oh no, it's not really a big deal. Hey Keiji, we're here too. Keiji Gun's parents are here. Good evening. Nice to meet you. I'm Keiji's Meow Meow, Rika. Nice to meet you. My name is Sadko Hojo. So you're Sadko Jam. Such a poor little girl. Look at her face. You can make use of Keiji if anything happens again. In return, what would you think about modelling for me? <laughs> Your father reminds me a bit of a coach. Sorry. That's just the kind of person he is. <laughs> Big perv. Still, he seems very nice and fun to be around. Keiji's parents are also here at the festival. Since they're the parents of a hero, they're getting special treatment too. From what Keiji says, this has been a good opportunity for his parents to get to know people from the village. His father is telling people that he'll draw up a picture if the council ever needs a poster for anything. Apparently, Keiji's father is such a wonderful artist that people have tried stealing his work before. Looking forward to seeing it someday. Oh, hello. Forgot about it. <laughs> it's the best Watanagashi festival I've ever had. Yes. I feel the same way. You've been around a lot longer than me. If it's your best one, then it must be mine too. Oh. Uh -oh. Still, I think this is the most fun and exciting festival we've had since it became known as Watanagashi. The Watanagashi festival only became like this just a few years ago, didn't it? It used to be just a boring traditional ceremony that the Furude family held. And before that, it used to be something different, more like the things that Takano is interested in. No. Oh. Sorry. I'll try not to be mean to you today. Let's go have fun. The both of us. It's a special night for both me and you. Hanyu is muttering to herself. We had once been we had once seen a world where Shion killed Sadako. Both that horrible world and this fantastic one. They're the same Hinamazawa. People in this world only know what Hinamazawa is a happy place. But Hanyu and I know the truth. We know that there's tragedy hiding behind only a thin sheet of paper. That's why we can appreciate this world in a way greater than anyone else can. If Keiichi had lost his mind, today would never have happened. He would have been committing a crime tonight. If it happened to Shion, she would have done the same, and Venna would have beaten her to it by a long shot. That corpse would have been long buried by now. Mion never lost her mind in any way of, in any of the worlds. Maybe she, did, she doesn't have the guts for that. Well, I suppose that's a little mean. There were times when I went on a rampage too, but no matter what, ended up being killed instead. How pathetic. Either way, it never worked in any world. We can never get our happiness back like that. That's why I gave up. But mm, it is timed. <laughs> Again, it only happened because everyone helped each other. I'm not trying to take credit for anything, but I don't think the miracle would have happened if I'd continued not believing in it. If I hadn't gotten on the phone at the end, Sadako wouldn't have asked for help. The miracle happened because everyone tried their hardest. If even one of us gave up, the miracle would have vanished into nothingness. It was Keiichi even who told me how easy it really is to change your fate. If there's a meaning to Keiichi's existence here, it might be some kind of message. Thanks to him, I know not only what it means to fight against fate, but how. I'll never give up and accept my fate again. It's the opposite of what Hanyu wants me to think, but I'm sure that Hanyu can make a miracle happen too if she stops giving up and starts believing. I even told her so, but she just goes, oh well, <laughs> and avoids the subject. Ah, and there we go. That was a long one, but it was a... There was meaning behind the length of it, <laughs> so. You received a tip. Oh, we got a tip as well. It was the whole chapter in one go. We haven't had that this arc, have we? Skeleton notebook. Ooh, achievement unlocked. The rally. Hey. <laughs> okay, let's see what the tip is before finishing up. Watch the four, for ye know not what hour your lord doth come. But know this: that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh. Even God doesn't know when he will descend once more. He is constantly prepared for that day to come. Have faith in your God at all times. Your God doesn't even know when you'll see the light. Do not spare any effort. Study hard every day. Have the passion for discovery. You never know when you will be rewarded, but that day will come for sure. 
Until then, you must let the fires of your passion burn bright. Hifumi T. I, I have no idea what that was all about. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> but that'll do. We're not quite done with the arc yet. But I will save, and then we'll get on to chapter 11 next time. So, this has been Greeny XI. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in a bit. Well, <laughs> when we check out chapter 11. Because there's, there's more to come. You might be surprised to find. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, folks. See you again in a bit. Oh,